Russia was voted out of the United Nations Human Rights Commission on Thursday on grounds of gross systematic human rights violations during the Russian troops' operations in Ukraine, especially in places like Bucha. And what is interesting is that India yet again chose to abstain during the vote at the United Nations General Assembly. The Indian permanent representative to the United Nations, T.S. Tirumurthy, explained India's stand. He said that while India continues to remain extremely concerned about the worsening conditions on the ground in Ukraine, it also called for an immediate end to hostilities. India has again reiterated through its abstention at the United Nations over its stand for a diplomatic resolution to the conflict. India has abstained on the resolution adopted in the General Assembly today. We do so for reasons of both substance and process. We believe that no solution can be arrived at by shedding blood and at the cost of innocent lives. If India has chosen any side, it is the side of peace and it is for an immediate end to violence. We continue to remain deeply concerned at the worsening situation and reiterate our call for end to all hostilities. When innocent human lives are at stake, diplomacy must prevail as the only viable option. And now I... The vote was one of the toughest that India has faced as New Delhi is facing dual pressures from both the Western allies and also Russia. India has so far maintained a policy, the Nehruvian policy of non-alignment and has appealed on numerous occasions for the earliest resolution through talks. So far, India has chosen to abstain itself from voting in at least 10 of these draft resolutions at the United Nations. It has done so at the United Nations General Assembly, it has done this at the United Nations Security Council and also at the Human Rights Council and at the International Atomic Energy Agency. New Delhi has also condemned the killings in Bucha just days earlier and it called for an independent probe into the matter. India has also continued to engage with both parties at an individual level just days ago. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov had visited New Delhi and had held key bilateral talks with his Indian counterpart. S. Jayashankar, the Indian External Affairs Minister. The decision to abstain also comes at the back of key 2 plus 2 dialogue with the United States in Washington next week, where the Indian External Affairs Minister S. Jayashankar and the Defence Minister Rajnath Singh will be meeting with their American counterparts, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and the Secretary of Defence Lloyd Austin. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of how India actually choosing to abstain from voting at the United Nations and what this means for India's relationship both with the United States and also Russia in the near and the long term, we're joined in by Mr. Dilip Sinha, who is a former permanent representative of India to the United Nations. Uh, so let me begin by asking you this. this. This, of course, has been a very difficult moment for India. India, of course has this policy of non-alignment, the Nehruvian policy, and also it pursues its own strategic interest by maintaining adequate enough distance from both these big powers. What do you make of India repeatedly choosing to abstain from voting at the United Nations? Well, uh, first point on the issue of non-alignment. Non-alignment was not neutrality. India always took positions, even when it was non-aligned, based on the merits of the situation. So it was not aligned in the Cold War between the two superpowers, but on, on issues like colonialism and apartheid, India took very clear and firm stand uh, against invasion, against colonialism, and against the policy of apartheid. Now, coming here to the what's happening today in, in Ukraine, actually the vote yesterday was relatively easier for India than the earlier vote in the General Assembly, let's say, when the on the, on the 2nd of March, after the Security Council was deadlocked by the veto and the matter was taken to the General Assembly, in that first resolution, India was among the uh, 35 countries that abstained and uh, five countries voted with Russia. 141 countries voted with for the resolution uh, tabled by the Western countries. Now, if you look at the vote yesterday, you find that the number of countries voting with the West has actually come down from 141 to 94, right. which is a substantial decrease. 18 countries shifted their vote from abstention to support for Russia. That means they voted no yesterday. 
and 38 countries shifted from supporting the resolution against Russia uh, a month ago to abstaining. And among the countries that shifted from abstention to supporting Russia were China, Iran, uh, the, the Central Asian republics like Kyrgyz, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, uh, countries like Vietnam and Laos. And the countries that shifted from supporting uh, the Western resolution to abstention included major countries like Brazil. Right. And in our neighborhood, countries like Nepal, Bhutan, Maldives, Egypt. So uh, there was actually a, a considerable shift towards uh, uh, a greater uh, softness towards, shall we say, Russia. But mm. each country would have had its own reason to do so. But uh, yesterday's vote, I think, was relatively easy because India was in the company of 58 countries that abstained on that resolution. Look, but, but the fact uh, is that uh, India, as, as a large nation and as an important strategic nation at this point of time, because this is the 10th straight abstention on this issue that India has, in fact, resorted to at the United Nations. Um, you know, the Americans have been talking of the possibility of invoking the cancer, countering American adversaries through Sanctions Act. And the Russians had said that even an abstention at this vote at the United Nations would not be seen positively by them. How do you make of India's position at this point of time? Because quite clearly, we are looking at two big powers. Both of them have good relationship with India, but India now is being forced, almost forced, to choose a side. Well, yes, both sides are putting pressure upon India, but India is used to taking such pressures. We have taken such pressures in the past, and we have always held our own position, taken our own decisions. So on that, I don't think there is any, any, any concern about uh, facing the heat. Uh, the question really is, on, on an issue like this, uh, where do our interests lie, and how do we help improve the situation, uh, and how do we ensure that our stand is understood by, by both sides. Now, here, the, uh, the, the vote yesterday, I think, was a little softer towards Russia, largely because the issue was uh, not just condemning Russia for the invasion. It was expelling Russia from the Human Rights Council. Now, there you have to understand a little bit about what the Human Rights Council is and what kind of a role it plays in international relations. The Human Rights Council is not the Security Council. It doesn't have any punitive powers. And India has always maintained that the Human Rights Council is a place where cooperation takes place among countries, uh, many of which are actually serial violators of human rights. Uh, and yet they are encouraged to be members of the Human Rights Council because that is the place where they can sit down, exchange ideas and try and see how they can improve the human rights record in their own countries. Because human rights is essentially an internal matter. Now, what's happening in Ukraine is not just a violation of human rights. Actually, it's relatively less so. Mm -hmm. It is more a case of war crimes being committed because the Russian army has gone into Ukraine. And right. uh, we have discovered that they have killed civilians and perhaps also indulged in... You know, Mr. Uh, Sina, that, that, that is where you know, I, I want to ask you this direct question. Should India have taken a stand, especially because the vote was on the issue of war crimes having been committed in places like Bucha within Ukraine? Very quickly on this. Well, my view is that uh, the resolutions earlier in the Security Council and the General Assembly dealt with that particular question. This time, it was a question of human rights violations in Ukraine and expulsion of, of Russia. So I feel that in the earlier resolutions, we could have supported those resolutions because they condemned Russia for something that they had done was wrong. It was a violation of the UN Charter and in violation of international law as upheld by the International Court of Justice itself. Right. But on expelling Russia from the Human Rights Council, I think that perhaps weakens the Human Rights, uh, Human Rights Council and uh, defeats the whole purpose for which the Human Rights, Human Rights Council has been set up uh, to promote and protect human rights through a process of cooperation and discussion. All right. I think you've summed it up really well. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Dilip Sinha, for joining us and getting, getting us all those insights. It's Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.